on a couple minutes early. Figured uh, I would make sure the streams all run good, all good to go, while I level up my guy, because he let hit uh, level six while we were running last Wednesday. Figured I'd keep running up, because why not? If any of you are on Argodesson, and if any of you are flagged for the uh, capstone quest of Necro One, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just run something else. All right, I always go for the jump, and uh, I guess I'm guess I'm drawing on Dramatite. I don't know. This guy doesn't really have much else going on. No, he's gonna be swim focused. Ooh, feet, huh? Do I go for? Ooh, I probably need to go for cleave. Could do improve two-handed, but I really need those cleaves. Oh, can never decide. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for the cleave. Woohoo! Alright, we are live streaming on YouTube. Looks like the chat room is up. We are live on Twitch. Chat room is up. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Regardless of whether people join, I will, uh, maybe I'll just hireling it up. I'd really like to get started on my necklace. Hey, Erlock, nice to see ya. Cool Titan. Hello and welcome to Fridays at 4 here on twitch.tv slash ddostream and youtube.com slash dungeonsanddragons slash live. Thanks for watching. You can find our full schedule over on Twitch. From Sunday to Sunday, we got shows. Also 8 o'clock, or 8.30 tonight is Pikers Anonymous. This weekend we will also, I believe, be having the Bitsy and Matson show. And a Titan may be streaming on Sunday night. And we got all this stuff archived on YouTube and the rest, so go check it out there if you would like to. If you'd like to ask us a question in chat, we'd uh, really appreciate that. We are more than willing to answer anything that you guys want to ask us. Uh, thanks, Asander. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's Friday. We got the Night Revels back on through the weekend. Special Encore performance. So if you have some leftover ingredients that you just didn't get to, or if you uh, yeah, want to run some stuff, get that last item in. Help out some friends, what have you. This is a great weekend to do it. It's running through Sunday. It'll be shut off on Monday morning. We also have double daily dice, so good time to check out the daily dice, which I guess I actually haven't done on this guy. Ooh, and I even my, have my VIP gold. So, 8,000 experience at the press of a button. And long lasting potion of ranged power. Hmm, that's interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, appreciate you being here. I will take that. This guy isn't really much of a ranged guy, so maybe I'll I'll save it for someone else, but we'll see. It's bound to account, so yeah, I'll just kick it into my shared bank and then take care of it that way. Oh, I'm pretty sure I actually had an item here I was going to equip too that I can do now. Six. 
a little bit better armor as I'm getting things slowly cooking along in this guy. I have my Cloak of Night. What level? Only the four, though. Yeah. Oh, I got my Blood Plate, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Feather Falling, and what have you. Alright, so... Man, I really need another better ingredients bag. Or I should go to my shared bank and take care of it. <laughs> Auto gather. Auto gather. So, what are you guys up to this weekend? You got any big uh, DDO plans? If so, let me know. Love to talk about what you got going on. Uh, we did have Lamania up for our first update 27 preview here just a little bit ago. We're going to be shutting it off shortly for the weekend, and then it'll be coming back soon. Um, whenever we get a next build that we're ready to go, we'll have more information on that as we get a little bit closer to it. I'm not exactly sure what our next plan is. I believe we're going to be taking a build later in the week, next week. And that'll be that. How about we go in on, uh, let's see, what level are you? Maybe we should go in on hard if it's just the two of us here, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're right, update 29. I stand corrected. Do you only get the good points in Night Revels the one time, or will we get them again? I believe it would probably be once per life. But I don't know. It might well be worth checking. <laughs> I, I, it's probably worth a look-see just to, to see what's going on there. Yeah. So yes, Lamani will be shut down. Current plan is to shut it down sometime around-ish 5 o'clock. So about another hour from now. I suppose I should get my cleave out since I just took it. There we go. Man, I used to run this, uh, I was farming this one for a while. Uh, I don't know if it was on my past life here when I was a cleric. I can't remember if I got the blood plate. Oh yeah, blood plate's bound to character, so it must have been on this guy my, back in my cleric life. I was, uh, farming this one quite a bit so that I could, uh, get that robe, or get that blood plate, because I want it. Or no, no, the blood plate's from, uh, the, it was the, um, the Lacerator, which is the other one, and I still don't have it. Boo-hoo. Maybe this will be the time where I finally get my Lacerator, so I can glamour it. Because for those of you who have been looking at my characters on Lamania for a while, you'll know that I have an unhealthy obsession with the Lacerator for some reason. It's only because it's the best looking sword in the game and has been forever. Yep. Yeah, uh, we did announce on the forums here, right? We put together our, our updated. XP curve that I believe uh, Varguil has put out on the forums there. We're responding really to community feedback on that one. The community's been, um, you know, when we announced the flat curve, uh, we got a bunch of feedback that, um, you know, some folks were perfectly fine with it. Uh, others would have preferred maybe a little bit more of a curve to it. And so we are responding to that feedback and uh, adding a bit of curve to the curve. <laughs> So, if you want to check that out. Uh, the total XP needed is not 
uh, being changed at all. It's just we're going to be uh, making it a little bit, you know, you won't need 825,000 at the low levels. It'll be, I, I looked at that a little bit earlier today, I believe it's somewhere around the five, 600,000 range. And then it'll scale up a little bit so those uh, final levels will take a little bit more XP than, than they would under the initial sort of XP curve revamp. But end result is you're still going to need the same amount of XP, and it's uh, a much less steep curve than it would have been had we not sort of made these changes. And that didn't make it onto Lamania here, but uh, that'll be um, most likely in the next Lamania push that you'll see that. Boston time, yeah. You know the Night Revels is back because you got the pumpkin heads on the champions, which I love. <laughs> Best change ever. Ooh, champion chest. I uh, mentioned this, we actually, just uh, before I was on the air today, um, I was doing, Severlin uh, joined Draculetta over at DDO Players News, and I was in on the uh, call as well. We did a Q&A for their next show, which I believe will be going up, perhaps it's a special episode, later this weekend. Uh, it's basically, we just gave um, gave Draculetta about, I guess we chatted for about 45 minutes here, just sort of answered a whole bunch of questions that he had, took some questions from the forums, that sort of thing as well, so if you want to check that out, you can. I can confirm as well that we are getting ready for a buddy weekend next weekend for the uh, holiday, the extended holiday weekend those in the U.S., you know, it's uh, Thanksgiving. And for everyone else, it's uh, a good time to be grouping with your friends, too. Because we are going to be doing a 10% party bonus. So ex every other member in your party will get you 10% bonus. So there'll be a total of 50% on a full group. And then for the raid bonus, yep, we're going to roll both out at the same time. So for the raid bonus, it's going to be 5%. So that means a total of 55% bonus XP if you have your raid group filled. And that's going to kick off, uh, technically I believe we're calling it Thursday through Sunday, but I think it's going to be available probably as early as Wednesday afternoon Eastern Time. Stay tuned. We'll, of course, announce it on social media and all that when it's ready to go. What do you mean? Technical 13. It's 55% raid bonus. Will characters be wiped for the next Lamania build? Probably not, unless we have a compelling reason to do so. Um, we typically like to do that once per update so that people can copy over their characters, get geared out, and all that sort of thing without having to do it every single time we update the build. But if there's a particular compelling reason to do so, we could theoretically do it. I don't think... I can't think of any reason why we would want to at this point. I 
I wear the shun's robe thing also. That's yeah, true. I do. Yeah. Oops. How about I go the correct direction? In your people's opinion, Gorm Dog asks, what is the best race for a Deepwood Stalker Ranger build that somewhat maximizes ranged sneak attack? It is between Halfling, Half-Elf, and Human. Well, if you are looking at ranged sneak attack, it depends on how much rogue you're going to splash. You might well want to consider a Half-Elf for the Rogue Dilettante, which will add 1d6 sneak attack damage. It's a pretty easy way to give yourself an extra 1d6 on your sneak attack, so that might be pretty desirable to you. Um, but uh, there may well be compelling reasons as well to choose other things. You know, Halfling would for speed and such. I personally, I myself, would probably go Half-Elf, because I'd want that Extra, oh no, oh no. Come on, Molin. There we go. But, I would be curious to see what the chat room says. Ooh, nice. I mean, I guess you'd have to, it would be, for me at least, you know, it would have to be a pretty compelling reason not to go half-elf for the extra sneak attack damage. But it kind of depends... I mean, humid would be mostly if your feet starved, right? So you're going to want to plan out your feet, and if you really can't make them fit, then you'd probably want to go human so that you could get the spare feet. Halfling... I guess it would probably be for the ability to max decks out at 20, right? On character creation. Unless there's something I can't think of. I actually don't play a lot of halflings. I know. Alright, so I'm going to say, since nobody is telling me I'm absolutely wrong, I'm going to say Half-Elf. That's your answer there. I mean, Halflings are cool, I guess. If you like that sort of thing. Halflings are cool. I actually do have a halfling on Keneth. That's my uh, DDO cast build guild rogue. But the reason I say half elf in particular is because you say you really want to maximize out that ranged sneak attack and be a ranger. So I'm guessing that unless you're multi classing into at least a couple of levels of rogue, you're not going to get too much sneak attack. Um, if you are, by the way, I would go at least probably three levels of rogue, because you can get up to... Is it 2d6 at level 3? Or is it 3d6? I can't remember now. I'd have to look. But you can get uh, a natural bonus to your sneak attack just from being a rogue. Um, but it's uh, granted at levels 1 and 3. Of course, you'll get evasion at level 2, although you're going to get evasion as a ranger. Uh, regardless. Well, level 6, assuming you're taking at least that much ranger. Hey, 
Hey, Dracula, nice to see ya. We just talked. We dropped a couple of pretty big hints. I guess that's the answer. Talk to us on Friday afternoon. We'll tell you all the secrets. Hey, we're garbled. Nice to see ya. Yeah, we're we're in there right now. So. Or maybe about halfway done. Gormdog says, right, but as a ranger, the Deepwood Stalker capstone gives infinite range for point-blank shot and sneak attack. Is it worth dropping that to get a few more sneak attack die? Ooh. That's a very... Good question. I don't have an answer for that. I'm tempted to say maybe not. Now that you bring it up. That does sound pretty darn nice. Infinite range for point blank shot and sneak attack. But then then again that would lead you to want to pick um pick half elf as your race because hey, at least you'll get one D six sneak attack, so you're getting some benefit from it. And then, you know, presumably you'll you'll itemize and, and things like that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, that sounds like a... I've never played with that Ranger Capstone. All my Rangers have been Splashes, but that sounds pretty darn nice. So, I think you're on onto something cool there. Sounds like a fun build to play. Uh, Deepwood Stalker Capstone gives Sneak Attack Die too, so it's better to stay pure than take a couple levels of Rogue, Zirinlal says. The Master has spoken. I agree. That's, uh, as long as you can get some Sneak Attack Die from Deepwood Stalker as well, you might as well um, pick up that awesome Rogue Capstone. I might as well use up a couple of these, since I got them. Mulder Brockman, uh, level 6, and we are on Argonessen. We are running the Bloody Crypt. Did I not hit a lever? Oh, yeah, here we go. And Halfling can get sneak attack through enhancements. Hmm. To the DDO character planner you go. That's what I would do. I guess I would take a look at those Halfling enhancements and see what kind of total sneak attack die you could get from it. And then if that outweighs the benefits of the Half Elf, which it might well, and you'd want to do that, because the other advantage, like I said, you could potentially start with a 20 dex. And that would be probably a good thing, too, assuming you're going, like, dex to damage and all that sort of thing. But okay, that's... Maybe you do want to go halfling, then. 
One of the things I've always loved about DDO is there's often not a wrong answer. Well, there is. I mean, if you had said half orc or something, maybe that wouldn't make sense. But I think either would be a viable build. But it kind of sounds like maybe halfling is the way to go. Halfling pure rogue. But again, it depends, because you're going to want to, presumably, uh, max out a lot of that Deepwood Stalker, so depending on how many free points you get, and maybe better off getting your sneak attack from Half-Elf. I'm just going to have to do some calculating. Three sneak attack total for halfling, three for half elf, two for human from the sniper enhancement. So I guess it's really half a six of one, half dozen of the other. Given that, I don't know, man. Sounds like maybe halfling is the way to go. The one nice other advantage that a half-elf would give you is you would get the racial diplomacy, which has a separate timer from the other diplomacy. So if you're planning to need to shed a lot of aggro, which you might well if you're doing a lot of ranged damage, to keep up that sneak attack, that might be another consideration to go for half-elf as well. But if you're not really going to be using diplomacy that much, and you're mostly relying on, say, the group to take care of the aggro problem for you, then again, Halfling might be the way to go. Yeah. Did I get this chest? I can't remember. Yeah. Yep, I think, I think, and this is a great, great case for the character planner, in terms of uh, being able to plan out your enhancements, figure out what kind of points you're going to need to spend to get what you want for Deepwood Stalker, see what's left over, and then see which makes the most sense for your particular build, whether you have enough action points left over to, say, go for a halfling, which would have some advantages as well, or whether you'd want to go for a half-elf, um, also depends on, say, your skill point distribution, whether you plan to go, like, say, into diplomacy, that sort of thing. Most of the half-elves I've made, I didn't really worry about the uh, racial diplomacy, but then I never really did a uh, ranger rogue type form. If I did, I might well. Seven ninety asks question on update twenty nine. I have a few more levels before I can epic reincarnate. Will we see update twenty nine hit before Thanksgiving? Do you have a target you can share? I.e., start December, mid December, etc. Definitely not by Thanksgiving. Uh, we are planning to do currently, most likely two or three, most likely three of uh, Lamania updates and. Update 1 just took place this week. So we have two more updates, so that will probably put it not in early December, and not by Thanksgiving. I guess I would be hesitant to give any more of a specific date. Um, you know, we have a target date written down on a board somewhere right now, but we have a lot of work to do, so I don't really want to commit to a specific day or week, or even take a uh, bet as to the exact chance we're going to hit that date, because it is a tentative date at this point. But I would say you're safe in saying definitely not Thanksgiving, and you're probably safe in saying not early December. We'll still be doing Melania for over the next couple weeks.
Yeah, bluff too. You know, it's not just diplomacy, it's also bluff. So. How much have I gotten from November so far? Uh, the current team goal is somewhere, I believe we're at 3485 as of today, somewhere around that nature, maybe even 3500. Uh, my goal was actually a mere 1000, um, so we have well smashed the goal for the month. Uh, and I'm hoping that would be great if we could do, say, 4000 or so by the end of the month. I'm going to have to announce some kind of incentive for 4,000 that I haven't done yet because I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but something. And then, yes, uh, the if we for some ra reason raise 10k, as has been s said a couple of times, I will shave the DDO logo into my noggin. Yep, I'll we'll shave the DDO logo in my head if we hit 10k. Which is a pretty, pretty hefty goal. I don't know. That's been a goal that we've had for several years now. Kind of a long stretch goal. But yes, it, it's been a very, very successful campaign, and it, every year I do it, I'm just uh, really humbled and uh, proud of the Didio community. You guys are awesome. And it goes for a good cause. And if you want to find out more specifically, like, where the money's going, um, well, at least where the money went last year. Uh, you can find that information out on Movember.com. They do a, a really detailed breakdown. Frankly, you can download a whole PDF if you want of all their expenditures. But you can, uh, in general, you can also get just kind of like an overview. Hey, we funded this program, this program, this program. There's links to more information about them, that kind of thing. And it's a lot of um, prostate cancer research, testicular cancer research. They do some mental health programs. Um, some like kind of physical activity promotional programs, things like that, you know, to help um, people who are particularly struggling, struggling with say, um, you know, medical weight issues, things like that. And that's new this year actually. But they do quite a few programs, um, a lot of cancer research and support programs. Twenty k and I get a DDO tattoo. It's, I actually mentioned that once before. So I want a DDO tattoo, and for, ever since I got hired at Turbine, I have been having this plan in my head to get a DDO tattoo. Fortunately, I've always been too broke. <laughs> Tattoos are expensive, man. I haven't had the, the kind of money it would take to get a, a full color arm tattoo. This stuff's not too cheap, you know? But I am going to do it at some day. And when I do, I will show it to you guys. But I don't need to raise money for that. I'm just going to do that. If I ever do it. But we'll see. I always need to get my bearings. <laughs> well, 
Well, see, I don't need to, I don't need, there's no one that's going to get on my case about getting a tattoo. You know, frankly, I have uh, cool friends and relatives and stuff. They'd be like, rad. I could totally do it. There's nothing stopping me except uh, money. Well, and the fact that I probably am a little wimp. Because I've never actually gotten a tattoo. But I will do it. Because I really want a DDO tattoo. <laughs> I should live stream it. <laughs> In the pantheon of terrible ideas, that's one of my more terrible ones. Yep. Um, Gormdog raises a good point on his build. The sneak attack bonus from human takes 8 action points to get for 2 sneak attack die, as opposed to 17 for half health and 17 for halfling, which are both 3 sneak attack die. I'm still going to say, pro unless you are feet starved, I would choose either half health or halfling, and I think either of them would be a good choice. I think a lot of it depends on. I personally, like I said, I personally would go half health to get the automatic 1d6 sneak attack die from the dilettante, and then for the bluff and diplomacy. Because I think that would be, all those things would be very beneficial for you. But there's a really compelling case to be made that halfling might be a good choice for you too, so I don't think you could go wrong with either of those. I think it kind of depends on what what you're into. And if you have a preference. Oh, nice! <laughs> First try! Gotta love that. Uh, is everyone good to go? Everyone got their... Um, actually don't have it on yet. Voice of the Master. This is good XP. <laughs> Oops. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, time to up... Don't forget to update your trinkets if you want to do that as well. You'll get it from either Silver Flame or um, Blood of All. I usually go for the Silver Flame trinket. When you're done, click on the altar, get the Silver Flame amulet, voila! Absorb one negative level. It'll go up to ten. Actually, it'll go even higher than that. But if you do all three of the Necro Chains, or do the third one several times, you can upgrade it every time. Yep. Gormdog says basically the half-elf racial bonus to Diplomacy and Bluff is a bit small when they are cross-class for Rangers, so even with levels of Rogue, it would probably be too low to function. That sounds like a good reason then to go Halfling. Yep. I think we've, I think we solved your problem then. Go Halfling. Yep. Yep. Awesome, I'm glad we got that done. Now normally I would always say go drow, but I think in this case you raise a compelling reason to go halfling. Emerald Claw, not Blood of All. Emerald Claw on that necklace. What was I thinking? I'm saving those vestments of light for someone else. A different build, different character on the server. I suppose I could finally get rid of Mullen's Great Axe, too. Uh, 
All right, let's see. I've been doing the medium armor thing, but I think... Go will go with the impressive trophy. Sorry, let me kill that. It's hip chat. That's what that is. Uh, I actually have a pen and paper campaign tonight. So, uh... It's probably us talking about that. Until Gnome comes out? Yeah, maybe... Maybe you could... Nah, I wouldn't wait. Yeah. Go Halfling. Go Halfling. Go, go Halfling. So, for those of you who haven't seen this before, you can get the... Actually, it's not this one. Sorry. Wrong bag. The Scarabs. From all the Necro Chain, uh, 1, 2, and 3, you can get these Scarabs for completing the quests. You take them, and you bring them to the Stone of Change. You put them in the Stone of Change, And then you'll get a thing that you go back to the necropolis and you can get a free item that doesn't suck. Draculator says, what do I think of 5e so far? Yes, we are playing 5e and uh, I think it's awesome. I've been really digging 5e. You know, I'm, I'm an old uh, first edition player. That's the one that I cut my D&D &D teeth on. So for me, 5th edition is a really nice... It's got some of the crunch of 3.5, but not as much. It's got some of the sort of, I guess you could say, ease of use of 4th edition, and some retention of, say, like, the equivalent of, like, daily powers and stuff. But it is also a little uh, more lore-focused and story-focused and that kind of thing. So I love 5th edition. I think it's a really, really great edition. But people who like whatever edition you like, you know... All, those all that Edition War stuff never really does much for me, because it's whatever you like, you know? If you're a hardcore number cruncher, then probably 3-5 is for you. If you're strictly lore or old school, then go First Edition. You know, if you're um, maybe a little more video game focused, then maybe Fourth Edition is for you. Alright, so, I can have Lumeric's Longbow, plus two, Ghost Touch. I can get the Touch of the Silver Flame, it's a trinket with lesser undead guard, basically, if an undead hits you, it does damage. The third reward is the Signal of the Silver Flame, the trinket grants the wielder an additional two turn attempts per rest after resting. Well, for me, it's not going to do me any good to go for the undead, because I'm a barbarian, um, or the, uh, the turn undead. I could go for the bow. Not really all that great. I think I'm going to take the torch of the silver flame. Because right now I'm just using a secret doors clicky in that slot, so. There you go. 1d8, good damage, and a successful melee attack. Gemini166, I'm praying for wisdom gnomes, but with my luck, there will probably be another con race. Nah. I mean, I don't know that they're only going to be wisdom. But I think it's a pretty safe assumption that wisdom's going to be a biggie. Yeah. And yes, uh, we actually talked about Deep Gnomes just a little bit with uh, Draculita here. So you'll have to check that out when it gets live on the air. See, I like 5th Edition because it, it's, it's still got the lore focus. It's pretty easy to do. You can... Uh, I don't know. I just, I've just i been really, really digging it. You know, it's I like the... 
I like the way they handle sort of healing in it. I like the way they handle death. I like the way they um, allow you to... I love the, the way you can update your spells. Like, say, you can take a first-level magic missile and cast it as a third-level spell, which will do more damage, that kind of thing. So it really retains, when you're making those spell choices, you can pick things that you may even well use later on in your campaign. Um and still be competitive with it. It's a really, really cool option. I really dig it. Yep. So you guys have any sort of thoughts as to what you might wish to run? We have another 10-15 minutes here if you want to run something quick. Action points. Maybe I should actually start spending them, huh? Yeah, that sounds good. Why don't we uh, just run one of the uh, the easy walk up or the easy quests in uh, House K? I can't remember, Erlock, if any of your questions got answered or not. When was that was the la when was the last time I was out in Ataraxia's Haven? <laughs> That's actually a pretty funny question. Uh, when was the last time? Yesterday. But when was the last time I quested in Ataraxia's Haven? It's been a while. Yes, I know we gave you some big hints, Draculetta. I don't want to spoil the uh, the big news, so I'm going to keep it to myself. Oh, it's Haywires. Why don't we uh, do Lero summoning on Elite? I appreciate the sentiment about the numbers on the stream. I actually think that's not a terrible amount. I uh, The Wednesday stream tends to maybe be a little bit more as popular in terms of numbers, but that's because people are doing stuff, right? Plus I tend to... Whoa! How about I kill myself right away? Lovely! Wouldn't be a stream without that. Alright, what happened to 
my potions. Oh, actually. Actually, Sunlover, stay there a second. I actually have some mnemonics to get you. Got them from something or other. Did I just see that? Do I? Cause, yeah, there we go. Oh. But again, maybe not. Sorry. Can't be traded. Must have got them from Daily Dice. I'm not Warforged, I'm Half Orc. Half Orc with a top hat. Yeah. Friday streams. I think they're pretty fun. It's, it's a casual, well, I assure you it's not a way to wrap up my Friday afternoon with some fun playing DDO instead of working. <laughs> all you do is sit around and play DDO all day. Hey, I didn't die. I managed to get through that. Mm. You can get up to 10 sneak attack die by being a half elf or half link. Either of those sounds pretty good. Not bad. For what's essentially a racial choice and some enhancements. It's true, I do have a mustachioed Warforged on the stream. That's my Movember thing. <laughs> I said this on Twitter today, but it's true. My, uh, what do I want to do this weekend? What I want to do this weekend is play lots of DDO and then Netflix marathon my way through uh, Jessica Jones. But what am I actually going to do this weekend? Massive amounts of yard work. I have to tear up all the dead plants in the front garden. I have to rake about another 20 bags of leaves. And I have to do such exciting things like as clean bathrooms. But hopefully I'll get some DDO time in. At the very least, I'm going to be on Argo Sunday nights. Uh, I'm going to be running with the guild who donated uh, very generously to the Movember campaign this year. And so I'm going to be doing some raiding on Sunday night uh, with their guild. So I don't think that's going to be an open thing. I think we have enough people already to fill up the raid group, but if not, I'm sure that we'll 
have an LFM up or something. I think we're gonna do Death Worm and Thunder Peak and Fall of Truth. I think those were the three that we had planned. And then anything else was just gonna be bonus rating. I know, what's with all these trees dumping leaves in my yard? Wow, you can get 13 sneak attack die then total as a uh, shadow dancer. Very cool. Uh, is that armor loot gen or glamoured? It is glamoured, but you can find it. It is called the Blood Plate, and it's sort of my favorite armor of all time. You can get it from the... Um, the Temple of All. And House P. It's a pretty rare drop, but you can do it if you farm it enough. And uh, then I I did that and I just glamoured it, because it's my favorite look. So The armor itself is uh, fairly low level 6 armor, and it uh, gives you death block, which is not terrible at level 6 if you need it. But I uh, just have it for glamoured effect. That and the top hat. Boxes make me so angry. I must smash them. Yep. Uh -oh. That's true. At least I don't have snow in the forecast. At least I don't think so. I haven't actually looked at the forecast. Although in some ways that would be wonderful. Because then it'll give me an excuse to do exactly what I said. Play DDO and binge watch Netflix. <laughs> How about that cookie recipe? Hmm. You know, interesting, I actually, uh, one of the things I managed to do this week is work out what cookies would be coming with next festival. You know, we usually change up a few of the cookies for next year. And uh, so I put together, or helped put together, a list of, of the various cookies that I'd, I'd be uh, sending over to the team to have them make for next year. Or the next month. So yes, you know. Some halfway decent stuff. I wanted to replace some of the less desirable cookies with something a little bit more desirable. So, hopefully I did a good job. You can yell at me if I didn't. The only thing I got shot down on was I, I tried to petition for a zeal cookie. And uh, I think rightfully so. I said, no, you can't give that awesome paladin ability out on a cookie. And I was like, come on. I sense fire in my future. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, that's cool. We can do that. Lead on, Sun Lover. Or it looks like we're gonna do the optional, huh? A hey, uh, war garble over here.
Yep. Confetti cookie? That's a cool idea. Nah, we got some good stuff. Potion of wonder, I wonder why I'm drinking it. Big piece hand cookie. I think that might devalue Big Goose Hand. Oh! Ouch. That hurt. What happened? Yeah, that was just kind of a, a one-shot. I don't think I have any potions left. I think I need to get some. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's a champion? Okay. This makes more sense then. <laughs> Dude got champed. <laughs> Good luck, Gemini, on that curse blade of Jack Jibbers and an Antipode. Very cool. I, I don't have a Jack Jibbers myself yet. I've always wanted to get one. No luck. Ah, brick rocks with my face. There's that one again. I remember you. Technically you didn't loot the Antipode, but it was put up for a roll. Hey, nonetheless, it is yours. I think that's probably going to have to do it with the uh, live stream here. We're going to call it a day. 
appreciate you guys joining me. And thanks for watching. Fridays at 4, here on twitch.tv slash ddostream and youtube.com slash dungeonsanddragons slash live. You can find our full schedule on twitch.tv slash ddostream. Tonight, starting around 8.30, is Pikers Anonymous. Sunday, or Saturday, starting around 9 o'clock, is the Bitsy and Matson show. And uh, we may also have some streaming on Sunday night as well. Otherwise, you can also find uh, the full archive of all of our videos on both YouTube and Twitch, and uh, DDO Players News is ddoplayersnews.com. We're going to have links to all the information, or ddoplayers.com, and you can just um, find the video there. Follow them on social media, it's at Draculet on at DDO Players and such. And you can find us on Twitter as well, at DDO Unlimited. Facebook is DDO Unlimited. And I guess that's probably going to do it. Hope you have a great DDO weekend, and I'll see you next week.